If you are hearing this, you have once again tuned into the Consequence of Habit podcast. Uh, today's episode is going to be a little different. This one is, uh, we're going to have a couple guests on today. I'm fortunate enough to be able to sit down with a Mr. Louis Convery, hopefully I'm saying that right, and Yannick Drescher. Uh, unfortunately, I call Yannick Janique in the beginning. It's not one of my finest moments, but uh, luckily he corrected me and I got his name right. Note to other people doing podcasts, learn the guests' names before they get on. So uh, these guys were awesome. They're younger. They're, I think they're both 23. So they're about a generation uh, ahead of me, behind me, one of those two. And they, uh, they, they're doing the things I should have done in my 20s. They're trying to figure out how their brain works, how to be a better version of themselves. All the things I'm yapping about in my, in my mid-40s, these guys are, are looking at uh, in, in, their, in their early 20s. So uh, it's inspiring to talk to them. It was very cool. They were, they were very nice. When I had to cut this off, this is the difference between uh, somebody in, in my stage of life and, and theirs. We could have kept talking forever, uh, but unfortunately, I had to make dinner for my family. So, uh, they were about as understanding as a 23-year-old single guy could be. So I appreciate that, and check it out. Um, okay, so... Guys, this is the Consequence of Habit podcast. the The whole point is this: um, is that I like to look at, <clears throat> I like to look at habits. I like to look at what we do on a daily basis, um, and and try and try and decide if it's that's something that's going to elevate you as as the person, the man, the, the husband, the father, whatever it is, um, or is it something that drags you down uh, slowly? And and like I've said in some of my other ones, and I was talking to Jeannie right before we got on. Hey, I want to make sure I'm I'm saying your your name for, right first. Janik, am I saying that correct? Yannick. Yannick. Thank you. Yannick. I apologize for that. <laughs> uh, I was talking to Yannick before before uh, you got on here, Louis. And mm -hmm. um, this whole process started when when I examined my own relationship with, with, with alcohol. And I decided that I'd come to a point in my life where it was uh, the juice was not worth the squeeze. It was keeping me from becoming the person I wanted to become. Mm -hmm. So... Uh, I, I made that choice and to start uh, the process of, of uh, getting away from that. Um, and, and doing so, it made me really look out of a lot of other habits that we do every day and decided you know, what I want to try and change because I thought my life was going to get way better if I just did this one thing and I was mm -hmm. incorrect. My life did get better, uh, but it was, there was a lot of work yet to be done. Um, and this is a long way to get around to how we all met. But uh, it got me listening to Jordan Peterson. It got me uh, in a roundabout way meeting you, you guys and getting part of this group um, that, that we're part of. Uh, but with that said, I want to I let you guys introduce yourself, introduce your podcast. And uh, I want to end it with, with Louie. I want you to tell us, um, you can go last and just tell us what was your motivation to starting the group that you've started? Um, what made you think of it? What made you go forward with it? And... Uh, I think that will maybe help explain how we are all sitting in the places we are sitting right now. So yep. Yannick, mm -hmm. Yannick, introduce yourself, man. Yeah. Uh, like you already said, my name is Yannick <laughs> and um, I'm the host of the Understand the World podcast, which has started in January 2018 in which I kind of share, document my journey of being a student. I tell my story while at the same time interview guests on the show from every walk of life, from psychology, philosophy, self-development, like whatever just interests me, I share. Um, I also do almost nowadays have gone back to doing daily videos on YouTube. And my whole stick and my whole idea is just about really documenting um, documenting the time that I'm having right now as a student, being someone who's undergoing a lot of development in many different ways. And so that's why I try on my pages to share as much as I can with the people who follow me, with the people who choose to listen and watch me and, you know, try them, share the mistakes, share the successes. And so that I can, in the end, just have something nice to look back to and probably some other lessons that maybe people and I myself also can learn from. Very cool. Louis, you're mm. up, buddy. Hello. Okay. So my name is Louis Convery. Um, I'm the creator of the Jordan Peterson Archive Instagram and Facebook account. Um, so it's always strange when somebody asks me to introduce myself. Mm. I feel like I'm just a normal person, but I, um, I kind of share what I'm up to and, you know, my transformation process and, you know, my sort of um, like document and my process in such a transparent way that it draws people in. So um, I generally just do that on Instagram, you know, I started that two years ago 
Um, and from there, it's, it's built up to around 50,000 followers. Um, I mean, outside of that, I just got a normal job. You know, I'm, uh, I work on phones. So, you know, uh, a public um, UK holiday company. Um, so nothing too extravagant, you know, pretty boring job. Um, but outside that, I've got the Jordan Peterson Archive um, account. And we just started, well, I just started the Project Onwards account. Um, and basically what that is, it's just for a way, it's a way, sorry, for me to express different ideas other than Jordan Peterson. Um, but put my sort of spin on it, my experience, you know, my sort of idea or opinion. Um, so it's sort of, it scales a lot of different um, areas of self-development. It might be financial. Um, it could be some sort of addiction. Um, so I've started that account. And then from there, we've got the Transform in 40, uh, which is a little program I started, which we're both, well, we're all in. Mm-hmm. Um, and that was, so that's, that started basically because um. In, in lockdown, like, you know, the situation we we're all in, uh, I was feeling a little bit shitty about not going to the gym. My diet was fucked up. You know, I, I had fell into some bad habits simply because I didn't have the gym to distract myself, um, you know, take, you know, take pay attention to the gym instead of, you know, alcohol, drugs. So I fell into those bad habits and I realized that they weren't serving me well. So, um, I decided to start the Transforming 40 to sort of kickstart myself back in a better sort of position and trajectory in lockdown, make the best of the situation. Um, and then, you know, from there, we've just sort of increased it gradually, haven't we really? It's, it's we're just making it a little bit tougher. Um, so, I mean, I started it just to sort of try and put myself back in a better trajectory and be accountable um, and try and get more people involved. I want to chat with more people, you know, like you and Yannick. And I think we've got a good group of people there already. So um, it's a good little incentive, I think, a good little initiative that we've got going. And it's a good incentive to start exercising and, you know, pick up good, uh, better habits again. So that's yeah. where I started it from. And, uh, yeah, we've, we're around, let's have a look, we're 18 days into it, I believe. Mm-hmm. So it's going well so far. I mean, um, I'm not sure how you guys are feeling about it, but... <laughs> No, it's been, it's been, um, it's been good for me. I always, Mm. what I like, there's a couple of things about this. I like, obviously there's just the aspect of, of the challenge, right. Of, of every day doing something. Um, and what I liked, it wasn't just a physical thing. So actually, you know what, can you just give a quick, give a quick rundown of where we are on, on the challenge and what is the daily, um, our daily goals? Right. So. I'll have to get it up. Hang on. <laughs> um, okay, so at this, it's split into four tiers. So each tier, it goes for around 10 days. Um, so the base rules are make your bed every morning, first of all. That's a pretty, it's such a small, minute detail, but I think it has a massive impact. So we'll have make your bed every morning, um, drink 2.5 liters of water every day, absolutely zero alcohol. Um, that does include drugs anyway for anybody but I, I the reason i didn't put drugs in for that is because you know people smoke weed and stuff yeah and I, I don't personally see that as a not as debilitating as alcohol or you know, cocaine or whatever drug you you could compare it with so um but other than that we've got those three then we have uh, at the moment do 60 minutes of physical activity that can be split into two workouts obviously you know i know you have kids jt and yannick studying a lot so you have to try fit that in um, after that, we have read 14 pages of a book each day, which is something I've, that has been the most impactful for me, sort of sitting down in the morning and journaling. First of all, I know I know, I said, um, well, the next one is journal each night for five minutes, but generally I like to journal after reading. So we've got that in there. Um, use a diary and set up the following day every night. I do that anyway, but I thought that would be very beneficial for everyone in the group. Um, and then... I've sort of tried to personalize it with everybody, but for me, it's um, post 10 pieces of content per week, I think it is. Yeah, across all accounts per week. And it's a little bit tougher than it sounds, especially when you when you have a job and, you know, other things. I mean, especially uh, for you, JT, like I'm trying to like take into account everybody's personal life as well. So I'm thinking about edit- um, editing it up for tier three and try to make it more because I don't want it to become a hindrance. First of all, I want to try and 
shape it around people's lives and streamline the process. So that's the way um, I'm trying to look at the tier three, but we're just, I think we're 18 days in, like I said, and uh, I think we're all coping very, very well, to be honest, at the minute. Yeah, yeah, I think it's going, it's going well. <clears throat> and my point was what I like about it is there's the physical, physical aspect of it, but you've got the, the small things like the making the bed. Um, mm-hmm. You've got the reading, the journaling. So, so we're, you're, you're growing not just physically, but uh, mentally yeah, yeah. and mentally, uh-huh. emotionally. Um, and I also like the fact that, uh, y- Yanni, how, how old are you? 23. 23. So you've got somebody who's 23 year old student, right? And you're in where you're in Germany. Yes. Uh, um, Louis, you're in Newcastle, right? The UK. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and how old are you? Uh, 23 also. Uh, 23, <laughs> man, you guys are making me feel old. Um, <laughs> so I was, I was telling Yannick, I've got a 21 year old daughter. Okay? So I'm 44. Mm-hmm. And, and the, 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 the process of personal growth, what's great about it is it is not, it does not discriminate towards age, right? Anyone mm, can do yeah. it. Um, mm-hmm. and, and what I, what I like is the fact that you guys are, are in a different place in your life, but at the same time, trying to figure out some of these things before, um, you know, before you have kids, mm-hmm. uh, you know, families, all, all the other stuff, because I think that's a, that's an important, it's an important mm-hmm. thing to do. So, um, Yannick, how are you, how are you managing in the, in the challenge? How's it going for you? Um, well, it's going pretty well because right now my, my daily life, my daily, my day to day, uh, life is pretty mundane. I have two jobs actually, because, um, currently how my university is structured, every other university student in the world right now has something called an online study system. Mm-hmm. And that means that all of our seminars and everything is taking place online. Luckily for me, my seminars are a bit um, less, uh, well, demanding. I only have to write one paper for the end of, until the end of the semester because my professors are not really keen of this whole online thing. So they're a bit lazy, which gives me a lot more time to also work on myself and work a lot, a lot more. And so well, the beginning of it was kind of tough. And I think the thing I struggle the most with because I have ADHD on a pretty high level is to implement this reading mm-hmm. for 14, 14 pages or six pages or whatever the number might be in the um, respective tier. Because, uh, I mean, I, I like to be busy a lot. I, I intentionally keep myself busy because if, I don't be, if I'm not busy, I feel sad or depressed or I, I feel disappointed with myself. And sitting down and reading for me is always comes somewhat of a battle between what am I doing is what I'm doing right now really meaningful or is it important enough? And it's much more than just reading, but just accepting to myself that I have to just sometimes settle down and slow down and read and really soak up something with 100% focus on just one idea and one fact. The rest of it hasn't been, it hasn't been too transformative in a way that it changed a lot for me, but it just reminded me to reincorporate it. I mean, I work out t- twice a day and I also work a lot for the content and everything. So, and I drink a lot of water, I drink six liters of water every day. So, but the, the best thing that I took the most advantages from is what having this accountability group, um, where people are really ask you what's wrong. Like, how are you feeling? How are you guys doing? What are you guys doing? How are you working out? How are you doing this? What are you reading now? Because that way you don't feel so alone. And I think that's probably the best thing that's happened so far is that you have created and somewhat of a VIP community. There was all of people who were all willing to change. We have someone of the same ethos and some of the same goal to make something out of themselves from whatever the age there might be ever for every walk of life there might be. But it's just people that you can talk to when you have something on your mind, on your ranch and you have questions. And that's, that's maybe what has made the most indirect impact. Yeah. Yeah. It's, um, something else I, I really enjoy about it is the fact that, uh, Obviously, I'm in the states. You're, you guys are over in Europe, um, and and somehow we're, we've all drawn, got drawn together in this experiment, right? And this is, uh, I I think that is, is fascinating. We've had people, um, what, what's we've got one guy that was from Egypt, correct? Or we, I mean, we have him. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, we've got some guys from Canada. It's just to me, it's it's been, it's reinforced how cool the internet can be. You know, a lot of times it can be shitty. So this has been a really positive experience. And I want to give kudos to you, Louis. Uh, you, you've been really good at, um, at just jumping in. And when, when you, you've got a question for somebody and saying, hey, uh, like someone says, hey, I, I had problems reading or I had something. And Louis, you've always been, 
Why is that? Why are you having a hard time? And I, I was fascinated by that at first because I, mean, I was just kind of expecting somebody just to vent it and be like, ah, we'll do better next time or whatever. And uh, I like the yeah. fact that you're kind of holding people accountable on it. Like what's going on? Um, mm-hmm. well, there's an idea as well. I mean, it's like, so everybody is a, everybody's a student and everybody's a teacher, but you don't actually begin to learn until you begin to teach. Does that make sense? Yep. Yep. So like, you know, everyone's on a spectrum, you know, you have a, unlimited amount of people before you who are looking to learn from you. And then you have people on the other side who you are learning from. Mm-hmm. Um, so the, the only way to put that into practice is really like for yourself, at least for me is to sort of question other people about what might be going wrong and why they're doing it, because then it sort of puts it in the right, like sort of frame for me, at least to question myself as well. So that's the reason I do it also to help, but it just sort of, I feel as though, you know, if once you start of um, actually experience the ideas, but then teach them other people, that's when you really start to refine the idea and then sort of make improvements as well. So um, it, it is good that people are so open in the group though, you know, that they can share what, what went wrong or what they're successful with. So that's another aspect I would agree is pretty good about the whole thing. Yeah. It, it's not a tough guy challenge, right? It's not this thing, a bunch of guys getting on there talking about everything that they've done. Mm. Um, and, and I, and I think that's what I like about, uh, one of the reasons I want both you guys on is um, you guys have both been pretty honest and open uh, about when things aren't going great. Uh, I, uh, Louis, I've heard you in, in other uh, podcasts and I've heard you even on this one saying, hey, I struggled during the quarantine, drugs, alcohol, that was the direction I was going. So um, I want to make a positive change. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm cu- What I'm curious for both of you, and, and you, I don't care what order you guys uh, answer this in, but what at your age do you think is driving you to become a better version of yourself? Cause I, I I'm only basing this off of myself at 23. Mm-hmm. I was in the military. Um, personal growth was not on my radar. Uh, and, and, and I'll, I'll, I'll let you guys explain why the, why you think that is now. Um, and, and then I'll, then I'll, I've got some things to add to it, but, uh, um, yeah, Yana, you can go ahead and start. What's, uh, what's your journey like? What is it? Why is it you are searching for, for Yannick 2.0? <laughs> it's, it's a very tough question because it's obviously, it's not easy to answer for, um, I would say it's two factors for me. It, one of them is, um, dissatisfaction because I sometimes get into fields, areas, situations where I feel like I could be doing better, but I'm not. Um, it's especially in situations with conflict because I'm absolutely, I'm a very, unfortunately much too much, way too agreeable person. I hate conflict. And that's why I, I, areas where I think to myself, I could be better in these situations that drive me to personal growth, but it's also fear. And I think that's the most important factor is fear mm. simply because I've seen people um, that includes my parents and includes some of my friends and includes some of my, the jobs I've had while I was working at, while I was a student. Um, and I've seen lives where they didn't perform this self work. They didn't perform the work on themselves. They didn't look in themselves into themselves and we've all seen them and they scared me and I didn't want to be like them. I didn't want to be someone who just one day uh, blames everyone else for their failures. I doesn't want, don't want to be someone who doesn't take responsibility for their mistakes. And I do not want to be someone who doesn't try um, the most to make their life well, to, to make them give themselves a fair chance at life and use the opportunities that I can get. Because I think the most important part that I don't want to miss out, that I don't want to be affected by too much is regret. And I think we all regret many things already. And when we think back on them, of course, these are painful moments. And, um, once you understand what I understood, and that was probably two to three years ago that, um, I am in charge of how much regret I'm left left behind with, um, that's when I really started to think about what I can do better and what I'm really flawed with. And so the, the most, the search for Yannick 2.0 is mainly due to fear of, um, of really, of, well, of answering the question of not having an answer to this question of saying, is that it? And I don't have a question yet. And that's why I'm searching. I like it. I have an answer. I have an answer, not a question. (laughs) Yeah. Louis, you're up. Um, so I would say, well, it all began when I left school. And um, 
I was sort of like, I was spending so much time at conspiracy theories. This is a weird way to start it, but I was such a conspiracy theorist. <laughs> and I would waste all this time and then I gradually, you know, like, I was like, Jesus Christ, what the hell am I doing with my time? <laughs> it's a waste of time. And it, I think, well, first of all, I, I can't really like say that it was such a bad thing because I, I believe it, like, as well as listening to the Joe Rogan podcast, mm-hmm. it helped open my mind. So I'm a lot more open-minded now because of that. But I, I just sort of questioned, like, um, I was like, I was just consumed by what was going on, in, like, in Iraq back then, like, um, recessions, 9-11. And I just, I just thought, like, one day I was just like, what the hell can I change or what can I do about any of this stuff? I'm useless. Like, you have to, it just sort of reversed, like, from outwards, to like inwards and it sounds so spiritual but it's more of a practical sense because i'm more a science science minded and more practical um now but i think i just didn't i've wasted enough time like yannick said um and i realized that uh, i just couldn't change anything i the, the only thing i have control over is myself mm-hmm. what i can do how i react to things um the decisions I, the decisions that i make as well um, I was just chatting before this actually and uh, I'm going to get it up because it's on DM first of all but I was chatting with a guy um, and he put he, he sent us this little he said this little sort of um, it's like a uh, sentence that just stuck out um, so I'm going to read it he said so he said so there's so first you put the oxygen mask on you know like if you if like let's say a plane is yep. going down you mm-hmm. first put the oxygen mask on yourself and mm-hmm. then you help the others around you and i just thought that's such a cool way to put it because if you don't put the oxygen mask on yourself right and you and you black out or whatever then you're useless to anybody else around you yep. or the situation as a whole so it's a it's a pretty cool idea just to, uh, to think about it but i know there's there's better examples of that but um the idea is that, you know, you can, you sort of control how you react to things. And, um, that's the sort of route I took, you know, like I said, I wasted a lot of time with drugs and alcohol. I think that's why I go so hard with it now. This self-development is because I was so irresponsible with money decisions, relationships and everything like that. I think, um, I've just realized that, um, I'm the only person that can make a change and sort of, uh, that is going to rescue myself, to be honest. Um, and so now it's personal development, but it's sort of, I'm delving into like what it, what it means to become a man, um, and stuff like that, you know, because that's the next sort of step, isn't it? So, um, I'm learning by, you know, personal development and just the people around me as well, because, um, that's sort of the next step for me. How, how can I become more responsible? Um, and yeah, I would just say that, you know, there's been so much influence um, by a lot of different people. Um, But yeah, it's just basically because I I didn't want to waste any more time. And um, I'm the only person who's going to either mess up my life or uh, sort of direct it towards something better. And that's the, that's the thing that I think lots of people don't realize. So I I, I agree. I think I spent a lot of my life thinking I was a, a, I, I've said it in other ones where like, Hey, I'm not a victim of circumstance, right? I'm a, I'm a product of, of what I do daily. And I would always joke around that I had arrested development and, and I, I'm, I meant it. Like, I think, um, for a long time that like, Hey, you know, I felt like, uh, I think I feel the same as I did when I was 20 years old. I just happened to be older. Right. Uh, yeah. and then you have kids and you have, and even at that point, you, uh, there's, there's something about, almost feeling like, like like pretending you're an adult and going through the motions. And then I think there's an actual maturity that comes along with it. And, and obviously kids do change that, but I completely <laughs> get what both of you guys are saying is becoming a man, understanding, like I'm, I'm really getting into stoicism too. And that's one of the main beliefs is that, that um, there's only a few things you can control. And, th- and that's you, that, yeah. that's mm-hmm. what's going on between your ears and your reaction to the outside world. Uh, and I'm, I'm ADHD as well. So I completely get, uh, a, a lot of that. And, and I think that's hindered me in that I, I'm distracted really easily. And, uh, so even social media, I have to be careful, like, cause it will, 
I don't drink anymore. Um, I, I, I don't do drugs. I don't do anything. So uh, my, my brain's still searching for that mm-hmm. escape. Um, mm-hmm. And that's why yeah. I think like things like reading, yeah. it, it can be tough because I want that that shiny thing over there to make me feel good for like three or four seconds. Um, <laughs> and then I'm searching for the next shiny thing. So that's, that's definitely something I, I'm personally working on. Um, what I think is great is you guys, uh, you have these, these avenues to, to start searching this stuff up where it used to be, you had to go to a library. Um, mm-hmm. when I was 22. I wasn't listening to Joe Rogan. I wasn't listening to Jordan Peterson. Um, and it's opened up a whole new world for me. Right? It's over like now I can just go on. I can listen to Sam Harris. I can listen to all these different people that are so much smarter than I am who have gone, you know, taken these roads. I got even guys like you, you've guys have started this journey so long before I did. And I'm really, really, uh, uh, I feel grateful for, for even tapping into it from here on out. Right. So I can sit back and go, Hey, I wish I'd started this process a long time ago. Um, hmm. but that's useless. It you know, no good. Go um, you know, it's 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 easy. I mean, I look not easy, but it's easy always to say that. Um, you know, you feel you feel it's maybe some sort of regret right now, and you're grateful, and I'm really happy that um, you will feel like this. But the point of that is, you know, the whole you are 44 now, and you are a rare rare breed because a person who at 44 looks into themselves and asks themselves, what can I do different with my life? How can I develop myself? And who actually has this insight, the, the ability and the capability to have an insight and say, there's still something's wrong with me. That's rare. Um, because many adults, probably you know them, I know them, that I talk to are so convinced of themselves that they don't have anything else that need to learn. Like the parental generation above me that are 40, 50, 60 years old, they have such a strict and locked in mindset and they don't, I don't think that all their habits are perfect and they need to just lie back, put their feet up and left the world to lay at their feet. So I think that's also a great credit goes to you for having this, this will or this one to actually still make a change in that age. You know, because that's not so common because when we we are between 20 and 30, you know, that's a transformative period that people are expected to make many changes mm. where they're expected to figure some things out, where they're expected to find their place, where they're expected to have somewhat of an order on their own, whatever that might be, whether it's going to the military, go to university, get a job, you know, whatever that is. But we are expected to do that. But when the older you get, like when you're, you're 44 now, you're not expected to, you know, um, get your life together. You are expected to have your life together. You're expected to have a certain structure. And so at this point to still say, I need to learn something, it's also a big step to take. And I think that's very it's noble that you're still doing, that you're doing it. I, I appreciate that. Um, I think a lot of it, uh, like I said, came from... Uh, oh, hold on. Freaking Zoom sending me a pop up right in the middle. Seriously, um, I, I think that the process of of, of looking at, at my relationship with alcohol, and I, I mean, I don't want to, uh, I don't want to uh, hijack the the uh, podcast talking about that. But part of that process of, of any twelve step uh, program, any of that, is a, a pretty serious, hard look at yourself. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and I, I've been on a journey where I, you know, I would start. I'd get into meditation. I would do all of, I would do a lot of things that I thought were supposed to be um, helpful. And maybe they were, but I had certain things that were, you know, you can meditate all you want, but if you've got a drug habit, you've got an alcohol habit, you've got something that's constantly dragging you down, then um, your ceiling's kind of low as far as growth. Like you're only going to go so far if you're constantly escaping. Um, Mm -hmm. And I don't know, uh, Louis, I don't know, uh, I don't know if, if that's it, like resonated with you at all. Um, just cause I know you had, you had mentioned some, some use before. Um, and I'm not trying to, I don't want to drag you into some stuff. You certainly don't want to talk about. Uh, <laughs> but, but it, it is, it's intriguing to me that you, you become what you surround yourself with. And I think mm. that circles around to, I'm happy to be part of this group. And if you mm. surround yourself with people doing certain things, uh, I like to think that we have free will and you're going to remain the person you are, but I, I don't think that's true. I think you slowly become what you surround yourself with. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. I think I'm very much big, like on so many levels. So whether you work in and then, um, the people that you surround yourself with, 
And then there's environment that you can't control like when you were brought up with and stuff like that. And you said a victim of circumstance earlier. It's just a decision really, you know, like for me growing up, um, I had never seen anything of drugs till I left school. It was just like, I remember I was in Las Vegas uh, away for um, working for an affiliate marketing company. And that's the first time I've seen it in front of his then. And then when I came back home, it was just everywhere. And that's simply because I was hanging around with all the kids who were smarter, you know, were, were actually working on some good stuff. But um, it's once you like move out of the environment that you're used to and you move into different ones and hang around with different people, it does have an effect. Um, so for me personally, you know, I've, it's it would be very easy right now, for example, for me to just walk out the house and go get some drugs and alcohol. Mm-hmm. But it's not a decision that I like to make. It's not a decision that I feel impulsed, you know, impulsive. Right. I'm not impulsive or, um, you know, I don't feel the sort of need to go do that. Yeah. So that helped me um, figure out that the problem was the environment. And not 100% the environment because, like, it was then essentially my decision to act on it. But once you have, you know, people around you who are um, sort of egging you on and, you know, saying, come on, like, we're going to do this. You should join in. And it's not about, it's not a cool thing. It's not like, oh, I don't, I'm not going to not join in because I don't look cool because I don't really give a fuck about shit like that. Like, it's one thing I learned about years ago is just to not care about what, what anybody else is thinking, first of all, because that's just going to hold you back again. So that's a, like, you could tie that in with environment again. But um, like for me, like I said, the, the environment was probably the main part. Um, and then managing this feeling of sort of uh, heightened emotion in the body that you probably feel, you know, you get excited to to have your first line of cocaine mm-hmm. or have your first drink. It's like, it's, uh, so you have to manage that aspect as well. So I'm not just blaming the environment. Um, it's obviously a big part of it, but you sort of have to um, look at, you know, your decision making and uh, the impulses that you're feeling as well. But I would agree. Environment is... Uh, it's a big part of it. Like people say, you know, there's a saying that it's like your network is your net worth. And it's like, so Tony Robbins, I'm sorry to even say something like that. That's but cool. <laughs> now that um, it's, it's sort of like, that makes sense. You know, it's like what, what you surround, you become the, the average of the, the five people that you hang around with. And if you hang around with not many people, you have to, like you said, create that ceiling yourself. You need to make that large enough to become the average of, you know, what you're consuming. So, and that's where social media comes in with it again. You know, it's called an Instagram feed and and a Facebook feed because it's literally what it's doing. It's giving you, you know, either shit or nutrients based on content, you know, what you're consuming. So, um, it is. Environment was a sticking point for me. It's happened twice where I've had, uh, I've been involved with environment, a bad environment with a friend and then, um, one of them is was a family member, and now it's sort of I've removed myself out of that and just started to you know engage with people like you two online, and um, it's a massive part of it. Yeah, yeah, <clears throat> Yannick, you mentioned being ADHD and 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 avoiding conflict. Mm-hmm. That that resonates with me, and I've I've been a people pleaser for for a good part of my life. Like I didn't I wasn't a huge fan of conflict. Um, is I see that you you do jujitsu, correct? Mm-hmm. Is that yes. part of the thing that you do to to help with the um, the the comf- being comfortable with conflict? Because I, I I know through jujitsu that that's that's part of it. Um, yes, it was. Well, I was always I started martial arts very late, and I started only about one and a half years ago. But martial arts definitely the, was the first step of becoming more prone to conflict, and also just getting contact, like contact body contact with other people, mm-hmm. right? Like because every time um, you come into personal contact, where somebody touches your arm or something, like you shrink, but you shrink back, you shock back because you're not used to someone invading your personal space like that. So jujitsu definitely was the first step to that. Next step was kickboxing, boxing, and all of that stuff. But I didn't stick to that for long. I stuck to jiu-jitsu just simply because it's also some sort of a meditative art because it's not only violence, violence, violence. It's also the ability to control your own power in a way uh, how it res- to a degree to how it responds to other people's strength. Um, the second step to that was that I became a bouncer for almost a year. And that was re- that was like the that was the worst. That was the trial run for really having to deal with conflict properly because that's just that like working at the, ni- at the nightclub, working at security, working even at the night shift is no joke because 
you know, when you, if you, if you think the world shit uh, at the day, like try during the night, there's so much things going on that I just really don't have no idea about like people trading drugs at every street corner, the police showing up for nonsense, people getting into fights. And so that really was for me a transformative job simply because it did, it was everything I didn't want to do, but I knew I had to do. And so that's probably where I've gotten the most from it from, from really like ju- just jumping into the cold water. And so Twitch was the start. And then, yeah, I started working this job. That was the second thing. Is, have you been affected by, or, or have you been in a, a time in your life where you're, you can tell that you were around the wrong people, that, that they were affecting some of your daily habits and that you were maybe going in a direction or that you didn't want to go? Or have you been pretty good about monitoring that and just kind of staying on top of it? Um, well, I have to say for myself that I didn't, I don't really have many friends. I'm very careful with who I surround myself with, but it's not simply because I'm just like too picky or too arrogant. I'm just very, I'm very egoist, egotistical. I don't like to spend my time a lot. I, I was a very anxious kid when I was young. I played a lot of video games. I didn't go to parties. So I, I like to spend my time on my own. And so I've always been very judgmental of other people because I'm very conscientious. So I judge people based on the work they do. And I've only, I only surround myself with people who I think that I really enjoy spending time with, because you probably can say the same JT when you have ADHD and you spend time with people who are boring, you get frustrated, frustrated pretty quickly. So I've managed to stay away from most of the crap probably that many of you guys went through with drugs and alcohol because I, I don't drink alcohol. I have never done drugs. And so I really, really, it's, it's part anxiety and, you know, fear of it. And, but also part the, the question, it's also, why I don't drink coffee. It's just a question. What's the point? And so it's kind of, I've, I've cut I've gotten off in a pretty clean stick with that. I have to, yeah, I've gotten pretty lucky when it comes oh, to that's, that. Yeah. That, that's, that's great. I mean, <clears throat> You know, there's a lot of people to include myself where in your formal years, you, you know, you're easily influenced. You end up going in a certain mm. direction. And, and when we talk about environment, being in the, being in the military, they, they, uh, they teach you, right. They give you a blueprint on how to live your yeah. life. And sometimes it's not the healthiest of ways to do it. So, um, but we're chipping away at it, man. And that's what I like. That's what I like about this group. What do you, Louis, what's your, what do you see for the future, man? What do you see going on with this, uh, uh, do you have a grand plan on, on where this is going to go? No. Like <laughs> nah. Honestly, you know, I've been thinking about this lately, like, and I think Jung has a uh, quote about it, and I don't know what it is, but it's something like the unconscious direct in your life until you, Yannick, you might know the, the quote about unconscious direct in your life, and then you'll call mm. it fate or something like that. <laughs> no? No. <laughs> Well, <laughs> I'm not good with quotes, yeah. but probably it was probably along the idea that the, the unconscious things you don't manage, they control your life because you don't take them into your hands and rule them or somewhat attack them um, when you have the opportunity. Mm-hmm. For example, addiction, for example, mm-hmm. um, bad habits, you know, you yeah, they, they control it. Yeah, go ahead. It's actually on the flip side, to be honest, for me, I, I feel as though like I've made a lot of conscious, like shitty decisions <laughs> so on the flip side. Like, I feel like this is so weird to even talk about because I'm not spiritual at all, but I feel as though, like, like sometimes I feel as though I'm not hundred percent in control of my life. I feel like there's something else guiding decisions that I make or, you know what I mean? So it's kind of strange, but in regards to the plans, that's what I'm, the point is that I don't really have anything. I'm quite open-minded. I have set a direction, nothing too specific. I'm quite um, analytical and um, detail oriented in regards to um, habits and daily routine. But other than that, plans um you know for Jordan Peterson Archive are limited anyway the project onward has more scope but for the group as well I mean the aim isn't really to make money or it's just to learn and help other people and um be like like you said just control your environment so in regards to plans I'm not really sure what how it's going to go I mean it's not up to me essentially you know it's up to you know JT Yannick and everybody else in the group um it's up to everyone which direction that we want to take it so um, but I'm not sure, really, to be honest. We'll see how it goes. We'll see how it goes. Yeah, you're pretty humble about that whole thing. But, <clears throat> yeah, I mean, you are the one to put this thing together. Um, you know, I, I think I offended a guy, uh, one of the guys, when I, when I was joking around saying, I think this is how Fight Club started. But I, <laughs> I, um, I, I, think, I, you know, I think we're just seeing the beginning of it. 
I think we're seeing just uh, uh, a growth, an explosion of, of people that realize that there's more out there. Um, mm -hmm. And like Yanni, like you said, like we want to squeeze the most out of this, this thing, you know, this life. And to think that it's ticking by and you're not doing that is, uh, is a scary, is a scary thought. So you mentioned fear. And I think that was one of the things that I realized that um, you can't numb yourself or I mean, you can, but it's a shitty way to go. Right. You, like, mm -hmm. There's a lot, there's a lot to be done. There's a lot to do. Um, and I applaud both of you guys for being as, as honest uh, because I, that, that's scary at first throwing your stuff out there, especially in a world of social media where there's a, there's a million trolls that can't wait to try and drag you down into a negative place. Yeah. But I've got a question for you too. I mean, like, sure. so I, I personally don't see any downside to it, to being so transparent. And I know you no. two might see it, but I'm trying, I've been trying to figure out something like it's not, I don't have anything. Like there's nothing I don't want to share. There are things I have not shared that I will share. But um, it, there's a specific time I want to do that. And I was curious about is the things that you would not share, first of all, um, and what would it take for you to share it? Like, you know, is there a downside to it? I mean, obviously there is repercussions to some extent, but um, I tend to play the long game with things like this. So yeah. Yeah. curious about how you two feel. Yanni, you go ahead first and uh, I'll jump in on it. Okay. Um, well, it's funny you say that because I've started doing daily vlogs again for like, I think four days now because I'm bored and I really want to just, you know, document, I want to look back on this and say, what did I do every day? And it's been really cool. And so of course, into that, of course, then always comes the question, what do I share from today? What do I uh, refrain from the audience? And, um, I don't necessarily see an issue with sharing everything, but I just ask myself then as someone also studies rhetoric and on the master's degree is what's interesting because uh, yeah. uh, if you share something, then you rely on other people watching it. And once you put yourself there in the um, shoes of the consumer, it mm. should be somewhat interesting or somewhat re rewarding. People should learn from it. They should teach them something or something, whatever. If you just write, how, write down your grocery list and write how, how the weather was, there's no real value in it. Mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, yeah, you yeah. can share it, but that's what for, personally for me speaks against it is that there's no real value transferred with it. And all of a sudden you'll be like one of these like uh, click blade, clickbait bloggers, video people who just post nonsense that has no but I have nothing to say. What we've also already also seen with the COVID pandemic is I've unfollowed almost everyone on social media because once this whole COVID thing started, all of a sudden everybody was alone. And on social media, you could perfectly see who was comfortable with it and who was not. And so then so many people resorted to like just posting nonsense. They just resorted to posting stupid you know, posts. The result to hate, hate, uh, hating other people and cre creating conflict, creating drama just so they have something to do. Mm. And I think when it comes to sharing content, it has to be, um, it has to come from a, from a point that is position that is positive, that is encouraging and helpful. Then mm. it's okay to share it. You know, yeah. but if it doesn't provide proper value and yeah. sometimes you might think to yourself, you know, the story about how I went to the grocery store is going to provide so much value to other people, but it's also about, I always have to be honest with myself and say, you know, me talking to a camera, talking about how underpaid freelancers are, it's not, nobody cares. <laughs> so, and, you know, instead of bitching in front of the camera, I just, I want to share something, I'm going to share something else. Yeah. And so, yeah, it's, it's also, also part of being honest with yourself. What do you want to share and what do you feel like it's going to give value to people? That's the main things that I would ask myself whenever I, I post a uh, content or edit something together. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I think for me, part of it, what we actually goes back to what Jan was saying in the beginning or a while ago, at a certain point in your life, um, you like to think you've got it all figured out, or at least on a, you think you do. Um, so there's a vulnerability about sharing something. Uh, and then, you know, w you know, once you're married, like, I, you know, I'm married, I got a great wife, I got kids and I represent that, right? That is, uh, I'm part of a household and you don't want to bring any, uh, you're looked at a, at a certain way by w when your kids look up to you. So it, it, it takes a lot to, to, to come out and say, hey, this, this is something I'm struggling with. Um, yeah. I always have to be careful because it's part of growth is, is usually talking about the things that you have issues with and that you want to change. And I, I really need to also uh, spend enough time showing gratitude for the things I do have. And, and uh, yeah. 
I don't think I've done that enough lately. I've spent too much time, I think, getting on and, and going, uh, like, uh, you know, I, I had a problem with drinking and, and I want to be this better version without going, hey, dude, I got a, I got a kick-ass life at the same time. Mm-hmm. Um, I just want more from it. I just want more from myself. I, I, I expect more from myself. But getting back to it, uh, I haven't seen a negative of sharing. I've seen other people go, wow, that, that was, um, uh, I can relate to it, which is always the kind of feedback that you, you want to get. I mean, it would suck to go out and say, Hey, I feel this way, this way, and this way. And for someone's like, wow, you, you should probably get some help. You know, like that's, <laughs> not, that's not, nobody wants to hear that. So I haven't seen a, um, uh, I haven't seen the other side of it, at least to my face. Um, mm-hmm. I guess if anything is, it, it was the vulnerability of, of, um, finding saying there's something major in my life that I've done openly for so long and I'm having a hard time not doing that anymore. I, I mm-hmm. it was more just in my ego getting in the way. Um, and that would probably be the biggest downside. So to, to push through that isn't the downside. That's a long ass answer for, I don't even think. Well, but much. you know, what, what's interesting about this is that, um, you know, being vulnerable is one part, but I think another part is also being conscious about not making yourself an idiot, mm-hmm. you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. so many people, so many people disguise be, I'm vulnerable on the internet as mm-hmm. being able to tell everything about their lives and everything about what they're doing, you know? So, um, I think this vulnerability trend should come with the counter question is, am I being also good to myself by sharing this? Not everything needs to be shared. Right. Not everybody needs to know everything about your life. Even if it's a stories that you'd like to share that have, Teach, taught you a lot. I choose to keep some things to myself simply because I don't want to share them. And I think that's nothing bad about not showing everything on the internet, not sharing everything on social media. It's not part, and it doesn't have to do anything with not wanting to be vulnerable, but just wanting to keep things for yourself. And so, Louis, especially you who post a lot of content on three different accounts, um, just because you don't share something, I wouldn't say it doesn't, doesn't mean that you are afraid of sharing it, but Maybe you just don't want to, and that's. I think that's fine. That's okay. Mm-hmm. Some things you don't need to share. Well, we spoke about this dinner. You asked mm-hmm. me the question, "How do you decide what to share?" And the answer was, it was sort of like whatever I experienced. It's kind of like um, I, I get caught up in it all the time. Like I don't. I try not to become uh, or come across as something that I'm not online. Mm-hmm. I think many people do that. I, t- I don't know how well I hit the mark. Sometimes I, f- I have to rewrite sentences because um, I say, I, I like sort of direct it outwards instead of we, and sort of grouping everybody in as in people who have to improve as well as me. So that's one of the, th- the things that I struggle with managing the Jordan Peterson page just because um, I have to just be careful of, and about what I'm writing. So first of all, but I would agree it's about whether you know, if you framed it in an interesting way, like um, what provides value um so it's it's interesting i mean obviously there's downsides and jt you're in a different position you work you know for the the, is it the military and stuff like that so and you've got kids the consequences are different and the parameters are changing all of the time mm. so it is interesting i think um one thing i've learned speaking to people like you is uh it's it's you know there's there's times when you can jump in and say something and there's times when you should just shut the hell up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, I'm starting to learn that more. I think um, that's, a, that's because, a great lesson. Yeah, man. Mm. Yeah, I'm just you know I don't know everything. You know, like you two guys are mo- far more educated. I would say you know JT, you have a lot more life experience, and Yannick, you know you you study like you studied a lot, and um, I feel as, like you know even in the groups that I'm sort of um, engaging and I always feel as though I may have created them that everybody else is above me and I can learn from everybody else so um, mm, it's interesting just uh, learning when to shut up is one of the biggest things I've learned to do so <laughs> or I'm yeah. learning to do. <laughs> JT I'm, I'm curious how is it for you I mean you're 44 you're one generation over, um, above us mm-hmm. I mean how is it for you as someone who's older than us who hasn't grown up with it how is it for you to like look at this whole whole thing, this internet, social media trend, you know, like, how is it? How do you feel about it? Like, for example, it must have been weird when you first got introduced to it, like when you were probably 30, now 35, and then it just kind of creeped and crept into your life. Now it's everywhere. It's, it's it is funny because I'll discuss it with my kids that I think the first time I had an email account, I was, 
22. I was, mm-hmm. 20, I was your age. The first time I had an email account. I didn't have a uh, cell phone until I was 30 years old. Um, so it, it, it is. It, and it, uh, it scares me a little bit. Um, technology scares me a little bit. I mean, it's not like I'm 90 when I say that, it, but it scares me <laughs> in the fact that uh, I know that there are people smarter than me designing it to draw me in, designing <laughs> it to, to, for those dopamine hits to, to happen when I hear a ding or something. Um, you know, it's, and Rogan said before, this is, an, like, this is literally a social experiment. And we have no idea what the outcome is going to be. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I resist it in some ways. Uh, because I think it's tearing a lot of people apart. Um, I think it's responsible for a lot of the, the, the situation that the U.S. is in. I think it's a lot to do with the world. Um, you know, if I had an issue with somebody, a politician, anybody, I could, who could I tell? I could tell my neighbors. I could tell somebody at the barber shop. I can tell. And now I can jump on and uh, uh, I can talk to anybody. And anyone... You know, uh, Yannick, we, we, when we spoke about kids and, and we, we spoke about, uh, th- this is, Louis, this is before you, before you got on, um, that your role changes. You know, there, there's, mm-hmm. there's me trying to grow and then there's me that I look after my children. And the internet and technology and when it comes to having kids will scare the living shit out of you. It's like, it's like a Ouija board, except it's real, mm-hmm. right? Like you are literally <laughs> opening up pandora's box um Mm -hmm. but with that said i wouldn't be talking to you guys so i think uh i'm 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 all for it it's opened up my eyes to a lot of different things Uh, Mm -hmm. it's 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 allowed me to listen to a lot of people i never would have been able to listen to and i think that's helped immensely in my growth um uh even if even the decision to stop drinking there was a bunch of different factors that went into it um uh and then there was it was social media. I honestly not, well, I shouldn't say that. There was, um, I'm having a total brain fart on, on the guy's name right now, but it was a comedian that, that, uh, uh, um, totally, it was somebody I looked up to and he talked about it. Um, his process. And I'm like, Oh man, this dude, I look up to this guy in, in a lot of ways. If he can do it, I can do it. You know what I mean? Like, the, mm-hmm. so, um, so Yeah. It's, it's changed. It's weird to tell my kids about a, what a rotary phone is. I don't even know. Uh, mm. You guys probably haven't, haven't messed with those a whole bunch. But, um, uh, life has definitely, definitely changed. I think you're doing well, though. Like, you've jumped in with the podcast. Like, like Yannick yeah. said before, you have a yeah. certain self-awareness. People get set in their ways. and Or they either get set in their ways or they give up. And it's a decision at the end of the day. You know, you said you have to lead by, well, the road for your personal improvement is not only for you now it's for your kids by you know you have to set an example and you also you have to you essentially play different roles with your wife you have to be a husband a man mm-hmm. and then to your kids you have to be a father and a role model so it's um i don't know why but like i've felt more like lately i've been feeling that i've been looking up the figures like such as yourself and you know ryan mickler as well on instagram mm-hmm. yeah um and uh it's a part of like growing up and it's just interesting, you know, to see um, and connect with you. Um, and I like to, obviously, I know that we engage a lot in the group, but it's good to sort of, you know, get your point of view as well. But I yeah. think you're jumping into it well. It's good to see. So I'm yeah. glad that we're connecting. Um, oh, when, when we talk about being vulnerable and talk, um, and putting stuff out there, I, I, I think the, the, the absolute best audience to be vulnerable is, is when you end up having kids or you have people that look up to you and you can Mm -hmm. be vulnerable because to be the smartest guy in the room all the time, uh, it's just, it's not real. And so it's, for me, I think it's great. I came from a long line of, of, uh, uh, people with, who like to drink. Right. So I think there's something really cool about saying this isn't, this isn't working for me. And there's the ability to change. You can, you can Mm -hmm. change. doesn't matter what age you are. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's not, I'm not trying to give kudos to myself. I just, I like the thought of, uh, you can rewrite the blueprints. You can, you decide, you know, your parents, your parents said, that you, you know, you should be doing this, this, and this, but at some point you, you grow up, you become a man or a woman and, and you live your life, man. And sometimes that means, that, that means change, uh, mm-hmm. which is why we're here. That's why we're part <laughs> of this, this challenge. Um, <laughs> Give me, uh, give me, some, give me one habit that is that you think has most profoundly changed your life in a positive way. 
Um, okay. Quitting porn. That's okay. the number one. The number one thing. The number one thing that has that has changed my life so well. Wow. I mean, it's it's un, un, unbelievable. You know, it's an addiction that so many of us have, and almost nobody speaks about because everyone's ashamed because oh no, he's watching porn. But everyone, almost everyone, our age is watching porn. Many people much older than us are watching porn, and quitting that—that that was the toughest thing I've ever done. I, without a doubt, not like without a doubt, far away, far away from exercising, far away from having a diet, far away from always telling the truth. That's the toughest thing I've ever done. It's probably the most important thing anyone in our age, when twenty from twenty to thirty, should do. Like yeah. that's the number one thing, and I'm I'm actually kind of concerned that so few people talk about it because it's so detrimental. It's so I detrimental. Hope- well, at what point does it become too much though? Like, so, so I don't, <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Because it's an interesting question though, like sex or anything. Like, it's like, at what point do you deem like, is it too much? Obviously we'll have different limits, but like, at what point is it? Wait, do you have to look and think, fuck, this is taking over. Is it like too much time? Or is it like, the, um, well, I, I quit when I was doing it three times, watching it three to four times a day. And when I structured my day, <laughs> Along the lines of when I'm watching it, then I said I gotta quit. <laughs> <laughs> this is because it's, it's, it, it is it is terrible because you know um, mm-hmm. it's as much of an addiction as video games, as much of an addiction as cigarettes, as alcohol. Yeah. Once you align your day along, and it is something that is so rewarding on a short in a short term um, mm-hmm. basis, you're addicted, and that should it has to end. For example, uh, I used to play video games also ten hours. Uh, eight to ten hours a day when I was in, in high school I, mm. I I simply don't have time for that anymore and that's good because now I can play it maybe two hours uh, every second week or something and I can thoroughly enjoy without feeling guilty for it but you know porn is a quick it's a very quick access to um, the dopamine that we talked yep. about before yep. it's very quick access to relief very quick access to good feelings and that's that's a, I don't know it's just it baffles me that nobody talks about this so few people talk about this. Everybody talks about this. And the problem with that is that this no fab challenge that people talk about on the internet is getting so dragged into the almost laughable sphere of, you know, I changed my life completely. I'm a superhero now. I get all the girls. No, it's absolutely not that. Like it feels very shitty every day. It's like getting off of cigarettes or, or something like that. You know, you just, you have to find a replacement to live without something that's on the short term, very rewarding. So, Number one, definitely porn. Cool. Quitting porn. Louis. I don't know if I can match that. <laughs> <laughs> I was I was kind of waiting to say that. I, I don't know. It's just it's boiling inside of me to speak about this. Go ahead. No, it's 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 a good point to be honest. And I mean, I didn't expect you to say three or four times a day. That is addiction, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> no, a, I see what you judging. mean. Um, it is, it's, it's tough that one. I mean, I don't know, to be honest, there's two sides. It's like, do you, do you take away the negative or the positives? So like, um, for me, it's just a diary, first of all, like it's so simple, but I have to, you know, all three of us are very, um, but I think I could make the claim that we're very, um, conscientious in certain ways we'll have a lot we'll have enough going on that we need a diary basically and so the diary is a massive part of it and then i think cleaning so i've just read something in uh, james clear atomic habit uh, atomic ha- atomic habits book and um it was a it's the same thing that i've been doing but it was f- framed in such a different way and it's it's cleaning up yeah so i've like you know jp clean your room like it literally it's an extension of, of your mind i feel um, so having everything organized, like I feel like that that's a good way and it ties in with the diary. And um, so making your bed, cleaning the room, that's that's essentially what I like to do. But the, the, the thing I heard in um, Atomic Habits was it's like resetting the room. It's like you reset the room for the next time you, you're going to use it. You prime it for the next time you're going to use it. And I thought that was such a good way to look at it. Um, so that could be obviously, you know, um, folding towels, you know, putting them on the, the you know, to dry as soon as you get out of the shower. Such a small thing. It's these small incremental improvements anyway. Um, uh, it could be, you know, washing the plates before you actually sit down to eat, which is a habit I got into doing. Um, it could be 
you know, putting two sugars in a scoop of coffee in your cup the night before. So in the morning, you just have to pour the hot water in. So these little things, is, these are the more practical things. Like I said, I like to be more actionable and try and actually experiment with them. So I would say having a diary, um, cleaning your room and just try to be more efficient with time. This is a good habit. Um, so Yeah, that's, that's probably, I would say, one of my biggest struggles. And I think... I think Yannick, you're probably doing way better with your ADHD than than I was, and because I'm, I'm, I'm about as disorganized as you can possibly be. But that comes natural. <laughs> My default mode is a fucking mess. Um, <laughs> and that was kid. That was a kid. I was a kid growing up. My room was a mess. Mm-hmm. Uh, I got a I got a new truck um, a couple of months ago, and it's been the first vehicle that I'm like I'm like anal about as far as keeping it clean. Dude, I feel so much better about myself. Just something as simple as keeping my car clean. Mm-hmm. Um, so, mm-hmm. yeah, I can definitely see that that stuff. And, I, and it was actually things I do wish I I started to tackle, or at least have enough self awareness at a, at an earlier age. But um, mm-hmm. um, with that, guys, I, I I would love to keep this going. But to be one hundred percent honest, I got to go make dinner. My wife and I are going to the Poconos tomorrow, so I I got I got to make dinner for for the kids here in a little bit. Uh, Please give a plug uh, to both your guys. Where can we find you? Where can we see you? I, I don't have a huge following, but we're gonna we're gonna try and make it grow. So somebody mm-hmm. will see it. Yannick, yeah, after you. Okay. Well, um, yeah, like I said, my name is Yannick Drescher. The best way you can find me is on Instagram. I I don't use Twitter. I don't use Facebook. I just use Instagram because otherwise I get addicted to social media again. So it's <laughs> at J-A-N-N-I-K-D-R-E-S-C-H-E-R. From there, you have access to my podcast, to my YouTube channel. And these are basically the two main mediums I interact with. Um, I love engaging with the audience. I love talking to people and possibly have some more guests on the podcast. So just come say hello, say what you want, let's have a conversation, and yeah, that's it. And for me, um, I'm primarily on Instagram as well. Um, so my name is uh, Louis Convery, which is L-E-W-I, and then Convery. Um, I've got the Jordan Peterson Archive Instagram and Project Onwards Instagram as well. Um, I would say that, you know, if anyone's listening to this and you're interested in getting involved in the Transforming 40, you are probably going to either extend it or you can just start from day one, you know, and we'll keep the group going and help you through it. So uh, I'm pretty much just an Instagram guy, to be honest. You can find me on there. So um, I'm happy to chat and about anything. Yeah, I'll make sure that the um, all the information for it is is on here too. But mm-hmm. guys, this, is, uh, this has been really cool. It, it, you know, there's something about talking on a group and, and doing it on a screen. And there's something about actually having a, mm-hmm. uh, a real conversation mm-hmm. and I it's, been, it's been a lot of fun with three people, uh, another two people, by the way. I enjoy this a lot more than one on one. So yeah. it's I a bit more uh, simple, you know, it's a bit more relaxed than just having a one on one conversation. I yeah. think so too. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I definitely think we need to do it again at the end of the uh, the challenge. Um, mm-hmm. Even even if you guys want to hit any more up uh, along the way, even if it's a short one, just to, uh, we can get some other members on there too, just to, to pick their brain about how things are going. Um, really good, yeah. But this has been huge for me. I really appreciate you guys spending the time uh, to talk to me. And uh, let's definitely try and do this again. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Thank you very much for having me on. It was a pleasure. Yeah. Thanks, JT. Thanks a lot. All right, guys. Appreciate you. That's it from us here at the Consequence of Habit podcast. Thanks again to uh, Louis and, and Janique for kidding. Yannick for sitting down with me. Um, make sure you check out there what they've got going on the social media. Like I said, the Jordan Peterson Archive and the Understand the World podcast. And make sure if you guys want to, if you want to take part in the Transforming 40, uh, I'm going to have a link on this. So feel free to click on that. I think uh, the the more people that sign up for that, the better. It's been a really just a supportive group. So thanks again to those guys, and we will see you next time.